Well guys, Christmas came early here at the Lock Lab, courtesy of Clay in Blue Ash, Ohio. He sent me three picks and three new locks to go along with them. He sent me two hooks. These are all handmade by Clay and one handmade Bogota. And let me put two of these down to show you what I'm excited about. These handles are all round and they have a slightly, the texture is a, like a rubberized finish. They're pretty substantial. Very nicely done. Can't wait to try these babies out. Very nice. And he sent three locks and you know I got a weakness. You guys know that. Habus is always a weakness. Especially these dimple locks. Awesome, awesome locks. Habus has a habit of putting some nasty warding and then hiding their pins behind it as you see right there. This is a big one. This is an easy one. I think I might have picked one of these before, but I'm going to do it again with this one. The Marine 75. This all stainless steel. And then he sent this tiny little guy. This is a 75. It's only 40 millimeter. Again, also a dimple, but oh my god, look at this. Look how tiny this is and how difficult it is to get past all that warding. Abus really does a good job. Very nice. Okay, then I get this one. An ancient Ilco. Uh, no key for this one, unfortunately. Very nice. Uh, no damage that I can see anywhere. Uh, if you guys have that code book, you can probably look this up. I have no idea how to do that, but hopefully we won't need no stinking key, right, Clay? So let's talk about Ilcos and how you might be able to get into them. There's a couple of tricks to get in these old things. You do run into them occasionally. Let me get this thing clamped down and you see what I'm talking about. All right. Couple ways to get in, let's do it the hard way first. I will, I hope I'm not going to lie to you here, but usually these have really heavy spring tension, and this one does. Very nasty spring tension, and so, but a nice wide open keyway. So you can use any pick you want to, I'm just going to use a standard hook. Alright, what's the trick? Well, because it's, it literally is like a spring from a shock absorber in there, that's how strong this tension is. You've got to kind of balance the tension. You don't want too much tension because everything binds up and you can't move it, but if you have too little tension, then you, the pins won't bind up. So you got, what I like to do is push it all the way till I reach the edge of that, as far as it will rotate, and then back off just a little bit. And then I usually get a feel by touching the first pin, and if it's springy, unless yeah, the other ones are springy. So in this case, it looks like the first one might be the binder. But what you're looking for is to see that not all of them are bound up. So let's see if we can get this guy done. Okay, i got to click off of him. Let's see what we got here. Sometimes it takes two or three tries to get the tensioning part, because that's really the hard part on these. I'm on pin three, trying to get under him. I think we got it. i got a very slight turn on the core. Normally these only turn about not even a, a quarter turn, like an eighth of a turn, and you'll get an open. Okay, where was I? Three. Four is okay. Five, I gotta get under him. Lighten up on my tension just a bit. Maybe a little more. Maybe he's already there we go. All right, that is, I got an open. I don't know if you can see my, I'll show you in a minute the shackle on the back. But look how little this thing rotates. I, I, it's even less than I remember. It's not even an eighth. It's like a sixteenth of a turn in order to get it open. So anyway, that's the hard way to get into these locks. Let's look at the easier way. If you look at this lock, it's quite old. Uh, probably the machine work and the tolerances weren't nearly as good back I don't know, I'm guessing this thing was made in the 40s or the 50s, pure guess, but quite a while ago, and so consequently you have a little gap on the top there, and this is a shimmable lock. All of these little Ilkos are, and so, let me put this down like so. Let's go ahead and shim this baby open. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to find the one with the narrowest gap first, so it looks like, try to look around the camera, I got a the one on this side is a little bit thicker, that one's a little narrower, so I'll shim this side first. And we're just going to slide it in and rotate it back and forth. We got that shim, and then we'll grab another shim and go after this side. He's going to be a little more difficult, so let's you look for the opening and you slide him in there, 
and then rotate him around. That's usually the best way to go about it. Now you notice he didn't open. Uh, that's because the the uh, shims are wedging him in there. You know they're all the way down. They have to be depressing that spring lo loaded pawl. So we just pop him open, pull your shims out, and there you go. Just look in there. Huh. The pawl is there, but he's not coming out. This is, like I said, it's old lock. Maybe the spring on that one is broken. I don't know. Uh, let's just, he might lock when the shackle is pushed down. Let's check out a theory, just for the heck of it. I'm going to lock him. And if he is not working, the only thing holding the shackle in would be the right side. So let's just try it. Let me find that shim. See if we can slide him in there. Aha! Alright, it looks like the shim on this side is broken or damaged in some way. And the only thing holding the shackle closed is the locking paw on the right side here. Anyway, it's kind of normal for older locks to have problems, and this one does. Got a little problem with the spring-loaded paw. Anyway, Clay, thank you, sir, for all the locks. I'll be getting to these abuses pretty soon. Everybody else, stay safe, stay legal.